Today's meeting is being held by video conference. City staff are also connecting to the meeting by video conference. As civic buildings remain closed, the public will continue to participate electronically and can watch the meeting live streaming on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Toronto City Council Live. I ask everyone for their patience with any delays and technical issues throughout the meeting. The clerk staff have connected all registered speakers to the meeting by audio. The list of speakers can be viewed online by visiting the Etobicoke York Community Council's page at toronto.ca forward slash council and clicking the speakers box for today's meeting. Clerk's IT staff will be available to assist members with their devices. I would like to remind staff to keep their mics muted and their videos turned off unless they need to answer questions or speak to the committee. This will make it easier for me as chair and those watching the YouTube, uh, watching on YouTube to observe members as they participate in the debate and vote on the items. Members, please keep your mic muted unless you wish to question staff or speak to an item and ensure that your video is turned on. As part of each agenda item, I will ask members to raise their hand or unmute their mic if they wish to question staff or speak. I will then create a speakers list and will call on members when it is their turn to speak. When voting on an item or a motion, I would ask members ensure they turn on their video and raise their hand to indicate their vote. Members, I want to remind you that you must still submit and approve your motions by email. Staff are available at etcc at toronto.ca to help with your motions. Although we are meeting in different locations and meeting remotely today, the committee would still like to acknowledge the land we are meeting on is a traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples and is now home to many diverse First Nations, including Inuit and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Under any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act, if you have an interest, please raise your hand or unmute your mic and to indicate the item number and the nature of the interest. Seeing none, may I have a motion to confirm the minutes from our meeting held on April 19th? Uh, uh, Councilor Nunziata, all those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Are there any petitions at this time? Seeing none, um, at this moment we can go through the uh, items on the agenda. Now, um, I, I can't see Councillor Paritza here. Is he, is he with it, with the committee? Okay. Oh, there he is. Okay, uh, beginning with EY 24.1555 Rexel Boulevard, zoning bylaw amendment application uh, we held uh, for speakers. EY 24.2, 1306 to 1310, the Queensway Zoning Bylaw Amendment. Final report will be held down for speakers. EY 24.3, 1693 to 1707, Western Road and 10 Victoria Park East, Zoning Bylaw Amendment and Rental Housing Demolition Applications. Final report will be held for speakers. EY 24.4, 250 Wincott Drive and 4620 Eglinton Avenue West, zoning bylaw amendment application. Final report will be held down for speakers. Um, but uh, Councillor Holiday, I wish I understand you'd like to address the committee. Yep. Point of order, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to, as a courtesy, to let members and members of the public know that I intend to defer this item uh, as discussions continue. And if uh, people are planning to speak, they may want to consider uh, waiting till it comes back to the next community council as things could change. 
Um, but that will be uh, in the hands of you, Mr. Chair, and uh, within the rules of the committee. I think the speakers are still entitled to speak. Thank you. Um, th thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, that is correct. Uh, speakers uh, will be given an opportunity, but of course, uh, taking um, uh, you know, uh, taking having what you said, uh, they have a right to speak uh, when the report comes back as well. Um, we'll continue to go through the items, um, but with that particular item, because of the number of speakers, we will start with that item uh, when we go through the agenda. Moving on to EY 24.5, Edlington West Planning and Streetscape Study Final Report. This will be held down for speakers. EY 24.6, 1045 to 1049, the Queensway Zoning Bylaw Amendment Request for Directions Report. Uh, this is in Councillor Grimes's area. Look to Councillor Holiday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wish to move the staff re recommendations. Staff recommendation so moved. All those in favor? Oppose, that carries. EY 24.7, 2950 and, 20, and 2970 Lakeshore Boulevard West, official plan and zoning, uh, zoning amendment application, request for direction regarding local planning appeal tribunal hearing. Uh, this will be held down for speakers. EY 24.8. 1575 Lawrence Avenue West zoning bylaw amendment application uh, preliminary report. Uh, Councillor Nunziata. Yes, I'll move the uh, the recommendation, staff recommendation. So moved. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. EY 24.9, 2345 Finch Avenue West and uh, 3415C to 3499C Western Road, official plan and zoning app, uh, amendment application preliminary report. Councillor Peruzza. Yeah, I'm, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm gonna hold this down. I have a motion and I also wanna speak to her. Thank you very much. We'll hold that in your name. EY 24.10, 36 to 38 uh, Fieldway Road, zoning bylaw amendment application preliminary report in Councillor Grimes' area, Councillor Holiday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wish to move the staff recommendations. Staff recommendations moved. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. EY 24.11, 4340, Bloomer, Bloomer Street West Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Preliminary Report held for speakers. EY 24.12, 875, the Queensway Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Preliminary Report in Councillor Grimes' uh, area. Councillor Holiday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wish to move the staff recommendations. Staff recommendation, recommendation so moved. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. EY 24.13, request for offense exemption to the Trial Municipal Code, Chapter 447. 102 Lamar Drive. This will be uh, held for 10 a.m. EY 24.14, request for fence exemption, 37 Erie Street. This will be held for speakers. Councilor Nunziata? We, we can't, we, uh, Councilor Nunziata, we can't hear you. 414. I know that we have the applicant that's here to make a, 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 a deputation, but I'm ready to move a motion now so the applicant uh, doesn't have to stay all day. We, um, we, the earliest we can do that, Councillor Nunziata, is 10 a.m. So we'll okay. Have to, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. EY 24.15, application to remove two city owned trees, 146 Stanley. Avenue, um, this is held for speakers 10 a.m. UI 24.16 status on progress to build Chimney Swift Park, Councilor Holiday. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will move the staff recommendations, which is to receive, and if you can just allow me to say thank you, uh, first of all, to uh, Minto Development for their work in helping find the resolution and for their uh, their continued contribution to making this park happen, uh, to city staff 
uh, including uh, Eric Stadnik for a lot of hard work on this to find uh, creative solutions. And finally, to the Glen Agar Residents Association uh, for their work on this in helping to find a solution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. All those in favor of staff recommendations, opposed, that carries. EY 24.17, Residential Demolition Application, One Lake Crescent in Councillor Grimes' Ward, uh, Councillor Holiday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to move option number three, okay. uh, which is to approve the application to demolish the vacant residential building with the following conditions. Uh, and I'll summarize that fences be erected, uh, that debris and rubble be removed, that sod be laid, and that any holes in the property be backfilled. Thank you. Okay, the, uh, the motion is on the screen for option uh, three or option C. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? That carries. EY 24.18, permanent closure of a portion of public highway abutting 2200 Islington Avenue. Uh, this is in uh, my ward. Um, I will be moving uh, staff recommendations. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. EY 24.19, permanent closure of portions of Dundas Street West, Kipling Avenue, and Bloor Street West uh, in Councillor Grimes' ward, Councillor Holloway. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move the staff recommendations. Staff recommendations so moved. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. EY 24.20, Metrolinks Finch West Light Rail Transit, Traffic Amendments, Finch Avenue West, and Elana Drive, York Gate Boulevard. Councillor Peruzza. No, Mr. Chair, I'm happy to move the, uh, the uh, staff recommendations. Staff recommendations so moved. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. EY 24.21, Vision Zero Road Safety Plan, speed limit reductions to 30 kilometers an hour on local roads and public lanes. Etobicoke, York area, wards five and ward seven. Councillor Nunziata. I move the staff recommendation. Staff recommendation so moved. All those in favor? Opposed, that carries. EY 24.22, response to request to purchase portion of untraveled public laneway 127 King Street um, held down for speakers. EY 24.23, removal of a director from the Lawrence Ingram Keel Business Improvement Area Board of Management, Councilor Nunziata. Yes, I'll move the recommendation. Recommendation so moved. All those in favor, opposed, that carries. EY 24 point, yes? Yeah, um, EY 24.24, Rivercrest Rink update uh, in, in, in my area. Uh, look to, um, Councilor Nunziata to move staff or move the recommendations. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. We have one item to add to the agenda um, as soon as I find it here. Uh, EY 24.25, uh, temporary signage permit for annual Etobicoke Rotary and Toronto Road Fresh 2021. Um, look to add to the agenda. Uh, Councillor Holliday, uh, move a motion to add to the agenda. All those in favor? Opposed? Moved. That carries. Okay, so we're going to head to um, EY 24.4 uh, as the our first item of business today. Um, and I have a script here that like to okay so uh, i understand that councillor holiday is moving a deferral of this public meeting until june 22nd 2021 at 9 30 a.m the community council can hear the public presentations now from anyone who wishes to speak however speakers 
should be advised that if no new information is presented on the deferred item at the June 22nd, 2021 meeting, the, commu uh, the community council does not need to hear presentations from the same people again. The speakers can decide if they wish to speak now or speak at the, uh, at the continuation of the meeting on June 22nd, 2021. They cannot speak on both days unless staff present new information along with the deferred item. No further notice of the continuation of the statutory public meeting will be given. Having said that, we've displayed the motion for deferral for members of the public. They've had a chance to see that. Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, pardon sure. me, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, Councilor um, Just on a point of, yep, just on a point of order, there appears to be one uh, bullet point missing from the motion. Um, okay. And I wondered if I could just get the, and I'm sorry, we did, uh, we did uh, a bit of back and forth with the email, so uh, it may just be a cut and paste issue. I no. believe it's item number five is missing. No problem. We're just verifying that now. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what we'll, we're, we're gonna we're gonna verify that, Deputy Mayor. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna start to go through the speakers to see if they would like to speak to the item. Um, so we have 17 registered speakers. Uh, starting number one, Peter Smith. Um, I, uh, Peter, Peter Smith is connected to the meeting. They, yep, yeah, they've just connected their audio now. I am unmuting their mic. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, I will reserve any comments until the June 22nd meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Uh, Robert Wells. Robert Wells does not appear to be connected to the meeting. Okay. Oh, one moment, Chair. Oh, uh, uh, Rob Wells, though, is. I believe that is them. I am now unmuting their mic. Hello, uh, members of the committee. Uh, same, as, same as Peter. We'll, we'll reserve comments until uh, we come back in June. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Sonia oh. Pace. Uh, one moment, Chair. I believe Sonia Pace has called into the meeting, uh, but I'm not positive on the number she's called in from. I will email Sonia Pace to verify that. Okay, sounds good. We'll come back to her then. Uh, Robert uh, Austri. Robert Austri is connected. I am now unmuting their mic. Good morning, all. Thank you. Uh, I would like to defer my comments until June 22nd. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, Tracy Napoli, Friends of Silver Creek. Tracy is connected. I am now unmuting their mic. Yes, hello. I will be deferring my comments until the June 22nd meeting. Thank you, Tracy. Um, number six, Anthony uh, Monzi. My, my apologies if I mispronounce any names. Moniz, Anthony Moniz. One moment, Chair. They are connected. I am now unmuting their mic. Um, I will. Good morning. My name is Anthony Meniz. I'd like to defer until June 22nd. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. 
Uh, next up uh, would be uh, Margaret Pearson. That speaker is connected. I am now unmuting their mic. Margaret Pearson, you are currently unmuted. Uh, to the chair, I will attempt. I will attempt to troubleshoot with that speaker. No problem. Uh, Peter Pearson, friends of Silver Creek. They are connected. I am now unmuting their mic. Hi, it's Peter Pearson. I uh, will be deferring until uh, the June meeting. Okay. And Margaret Pearson. Hello. Yeah, we can and hear Margaret you. And Margaret Pearson will be also. Okay. Thank. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Marnin Green. They are connected. I am unmuting their mic. Hi, it's Martin Green. I will also be deferring until June. Thank you, Martin. Uh, uh, Barry Morrison. To the chair, one moment, please. No problem. They are connected. I am now unmuting their mic. Yes, I will also defer until June. Thank you, Barry. Um, uh, so number 11, John uh, DeSalvo, Richmond Gardens Ratepayers and Residents Association. They do not appear to be connected to the meeting. However, they were connected to the meeting earlier today. Okay. Um, I'll just, we'll just circle back quickly. Um, if they are, uh, sorry, okay. sorry, chair. One moment, please. Oh, they, yes, I see them. They are connected still. I will now unmute their mic. Yes, John, I'm going to defer any comments to the June meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. Um, Janet, uh, Griffiths, uh, Maximu. That speaker is here. I am unmuting their mic. Good morning. I'm Janet Griffiths Maximu. I also will defer until June 22nd. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Um, John Cirillo. John is connected. I am now unmuting your mic. Hi, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I didn't quite understand the reason for the deferral to June 22nd. Okay, uh, no problem, John. Um, the local councillor, uh, Councillor Holiday, um, is moving a, a motion of deferral to, I, I believe, and, and Councillor Holiday, please step in at any moment uh, to continue work with the community and the applicant and to bring this back to address some concerns. That is correct, Mr. Chair. Okay, I am content to defer uh, my comments as well to June okay. 22nd. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, John. Um, Peter uh, Pearson. I see them on the list. I am unmuting their mic. Peter Pearson, your line is currently unmuted. Okay, thank you. I, would, I wasn't listening. What, what did you want me for? Oh, I, okay. I'm going to do the fur and don't you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Peter. Um, Bye-bye. Number, number 15, uh, Gino Franchetti. Franchetti. My apologies. Gino is connected to the meeting. They just need to connect to their audio. The option should be available at the bottom of the panel. They have connected their mic. I am now unmuting their mic.
Gino, your line is currently unmuted. It's Gino Franceschetti. I will also be deferring until June 22nd. Okay, thank you very much, Gino. Uh, Brad Dixon. That speaker is here. I am unmuting their mic. Yes, I too will be deferring until June 22nd. Thank you, Brad. And then uh, last on this list, uh, Mark Richardson, uh, housingnowto.com. One moment, Chair. That speaker was currently not connected to the meeting. Okay, thank you. And then lastly, Sonia Pace, did, uh, did, did we uh, connect with her? Uh, yes, I believe she's still connected to the meeting. One moment, Chair. Yes, Sonia Pace is still connected to the meeting. I am unmuting their mic now. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. I will defer to the June 22nd meeting as well. Thank okay. You. Great, thank you very much, Sonia. And that will uh, complete our speakers, and thank you very much, Nahom. I know that's a little challenging on your end to go through all everyone. Um, so we'll bring it, we'll bring it into committee. Um, I assume there's no questions to staff, so uh, go to speakers, Councillor Holiday. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to the clerk. I think we've got the, uh, the motion sorted, uh, and for everyone's patience. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor Holiday. Uh, moving the motion on the screen, which we'll defer to next day. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? That carries. So moving on into the agenda, we'll be going to the top of the agenda. So this is uh, 555 Rexdale Boulevard Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Final Report. Um, we do have one speaker on the item, uh, Tyler Peck. Mr. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yes, Councillor Nanziano. Yeah. Is there any way that we can go back to um, 14? Um, we, we, we could. Yeah, I, we, we can. Uh, okay, we, we can deal with 14. Give me one second. Um, so I'm just going to put. Because there's only one, uh, there's only one deputation, which is the applicant, and so my motion will be supporting the applicant. Four, 14, uh, this is defense exemption. Uh, EY 24.14 right. with uh, Councillor Nandia's request, we'll deal with this now. Request for fence exemption uh, 37 Erie Street. Um, it was held for 10 a.m., it's after 10 a.m. Um, we just have to ask the so, speaker if they'd like to speak, Councillor. Um, I, I, I don't think the speaker will have to speak because I'm going to be moving the recommendation. I, 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 under, I understand that, Councillor Nunziata, but she, she has the right to if she, if she would like to. So we have to give her that option. Um, so um, uh, Joey uh, Conte, this is EY 24.14, request for fence exemption. 37 Erie Street. That speaker is currently unmuted and they should be able to speak now. Good morning committee for your time and uh, happy Monday. Um, yeah, well, I guess I, well, there's not much to say. If, uh, so I'm open, my ears are open to listen to uh, Councilor Nunziata's recommendations. Okay, excellent. All right, thank you very much. Just have to give you the option. Uh, bring it into committee questions of staff. Seeing none, Councilor Nunziata. Yeah, so the staff has my uh, motion to grant the application for offense exemption. It's on the screen. Okay, thank you very much, Councilor Nunziata. The motion is on the screen. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Thank you, Councilor. Um, so we'll go to the top of the agenda now. Um, 
So EY 24.1555 Rexdale Boulevard, zoning bylaw amendment application, final report. Uh, we do have one registered speaker on the item, uh, Tyler Peck. Good morning, Councillor Ford and members of Community Council. My name is Tyler Peck from WD Associates. We are the applicant and planners on behalf of Woodbine Entertainment Group for this zoning bylaw amendment application. This is for the addition of transportation use as a permitted use on the Woodbine lands to facilitate the future Woodbine Go Transit Station on the site. I provided background information on this application to Q the Community Council meeting in January, so I won't repeat myself, but um, at that time, this item was deferred to continue our work with city staff on a number of transportation related matters. This work has taken place over the past few months as outlined in the staff report. Just wanna thank city staff for their hard work with us to progress this important public transit initiative and thank you for your time and consideration this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tyler. Uh, any questions uh, for the deputant? Seeing none, um, no more speakers here. Thank you very much, Tyler. Uh, bring it into committee. Questions to staff? Seeing none, uh, speakers. Um, so uh, committee, this, this is in, uh, uh, in North Tobago in the area I represent. Um, we, we have had a few deferrals uh, on this over the last uh, number of months. Um, but we have a, oh sorry, I have a motion to move. I should move um, option B of the, uh, that's correct, of the supplementary. Um, so, so colleagues, uh, you know, this... Yeah, baby! Oh, who's that? Sorry. Okay, uh, colleagues, uh, just to keep my, um, my, my, my comment short, this is something that we've been working on a number of times. It's in, been in front of the committee a couple of times. We've had to defer it uh, to really get to a place where uh, the applicant and, and staff in our office can move forward comfortably. Uh, I'm really happy to say that we have uh, got to that moment in time. Um, so I'll be moving this off to city council. I think this is significant for North Etobicoke for a number of reasons. Um, of course, greater economic development uh, more investment, um, and I want to thank Woodbine for everything uh, that they have done and, and the investments they are making. Of course, thank city staff for their hard work uh, on this uh, on this item. Um, and I know our our planning staff have a lot of stuff on their plate right now. Um, but uh, but thank you for for all the work and uh, colleagues. As you know, I moved a motion. Um, at City Council, a member's motion with Deputy Mayor Holliday on looking at extending uh, the Finch LRT and to examine that in, in the future, uh, which will no doubt be a benefit to uh, our residents that we represent in Northwest Toronto and particularly Councillor Peruta's area as the LRT, um, ha you know, uh, running across Finch there and then looking at a connection, but it's the it's the bigger picture uh, that's important. It's the greater economic investment. And I think that will be uh, significant um, in the coming years. But this is a, you know, uh, another step in that direction. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, and, and I'll conclude my comments. Um, any other further speakers uh, to the item? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion on the screen. Opposed? That carries. So uh, we're moving on to EY 24.2, uh, 1306 to 1310, the Queensway Zoning Bylaw Amendment final report. Um, we have a number of speakers on the item. Um, so uh, Matthew Lane, MA Development Services. That's oh, no, three. sorry, that's item that's three. Two. My apologies. EY 24.2, yeah, 1306, 310, Queensway Zone Bylaw Amendment, uh, Adam Brown. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of council. Thank you for hearing from us today. 
Um, I can be brief. Mr. Jankos is on the call and was going to speak, but both of us are in support of the staff report. We want to thank city staff. Um, I won't name all departments, but all departments for working really diligently with us to get this finalized. Emily and Louisa, you know, heading it up from your planning department with all the other departments. We worked with Councillor Grimes and his office to arrive at what we think is a very positive result with a um, an excellent section 37 benefit. We worked on the design, the revisions, and um, providing a public park on site, affordable housing. So pretty well the full gamut of what represents um, not only good, but great planning. And I think it's been a great result. If you need a formal presentation, we have one that we sent in, but I think that um, the lack of any other speakers in opposition speaks to what a great process this was. So again, thanks to staff, thanks to Councillor Grimes, and uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of council. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, any uh, questions to the uh, deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much, Adam. Uh, uh, next speaker, Tom uh, Jonkos. My apologies if I mispronounce that. To the chair, they have audio panels, so they should be able to just connect by going to the bottom of their panel. They are now connected. I am unmuting their mic. Good morning, Mr. Chair and uh, Councillors. I just want to reiter reiterate that I agree with Adam's comments. I want to send out a big thank you to Emily Rossini, uh, Reynolds Casquet, and uh, Angela Stay for helping us through this process, as well as Councillor Grimes' office. And we look forward to uh, getting the project off the ground. If there's no questions of either myself or Adam, I think that's essentially it from my end. Thanks again. Okay, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, any questions to the deputy? Seeing none, thank you, Tom. Um, move it into the, the, those are uh, all the speakers moving into committee questions to staff. Seeing none, uh, speakers on the item, uh, Councillor maybe, Holiday. Maybe, for maybe just a, a I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, maybe just a quick comment from staff in terms of the, uh, the motion that I just saw uh, on screen uh, uh, with respect to the LRT uh, and its impact on this area. Uh, Councillor Peruta, that, that that's a different item. Um, this okay. we're on we're on EY twenty four point two uh, for the Queensway. You're right. Okay. Um, I just noticed that. I just put saw it on the screen. Yeah. No problem. No problem, okay. Councillor. Um, okay, uh, Councillor Holiday. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will move the staff recommendations contained in the report. Okay, staff recommendations so moved. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Okay, move on to EY 24.3, 1693 to 1707, Lesser Road and 10 Victoria Avenue East zoning bylaw amendment and rental housing demolition applications Final report, we have speakers on the item, Melissa speakers. Um, so going back to Matthew Lang, we're on the right item now, if Matthew's available. They are, I am now unmuting their mic. Good morning, uh, good, Chair, good, Councilor, good, it's Matthew Lang here. Good, good morning, Matthew, you have five minutes to address the committee and there may be questions following that, you may go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I'm here with Michael, Allison, Charles, Irfan. Um, I wanted them listed just in case there were any specific questions to them. However, I will be the primary speaker to this item. And I actually just like to echo the comments uh, from the previous uh, speaker um, and thank Councillor Nunziata, her staff, the community, uh, Sarah Henstock, Allison Reed, and Kadevi the now retired Greg Byrne and Olivia Antonell for uh, wrapping this up for us with a very fulsome final report. Um, we are in support of all the recommendations. Um, we're very excited about this project. Um, it's definitely been a process and we really appreciate everyone's time spent on it. There's one item that we would like to address though, and that relates to the parking. 
Uh, our final submission included a P3 parking level, and one of the conditions in the report is a requirement to apply policy four in terms of parking standards. And our request is that we proceed with the plans as filed with the P3 level of parking. Um, and the reasons for this are uh, direct, directly adjacent to a GO station. Uh, we are providing four car share spaces, bike requirements, um, and a P5 level of parking, or sorry, a policy four requirement, I guess, construct a P5 level of parking, which in our opinion is unnecessary. We submitted all the documentation uh, to support our P3 level. Um, besides that, that would be our one request uh, for modification to the regulations. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're fully support uh, everything. And again, thank you to counselor's office and the staff for bringing this forward. Thank you very much, Matthew. Uh, any questions to the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much, Matthew. Uh, moving on to Michael uh, Dorbdrovic. My apologies if I mispronounce that. Dorbdrovic. Michael is connected and his line is currently unmuted. We're just having, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Michael. Uh, good morning. Welcome to the committee. You have five minutes to the pew, and then you may have some questions after you may begin. Um, I don't really have uh, much more to say, uh, can convey other than I just want to thank you, thank the staff and uh, particularly uh, Sarah Hanstock for uh, for um, for moving this application forward. It's been a long, arduous process. Um, I'm just kind of reiterating what uh, Matthew has conveyed. Um, Councillor Lindsay has been very helpful, um, and again, it's been a very arduous process. And I just want to thank everyone who was involved in it. And um, and uh, hopefully, we can have a conclusion today for a final conclusion at some point in time today. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, any questions uh, for the deputy? Seeing none, thank you. Uh, moving on to Allison Tudor. Allison is connected to the meeting. I'm now unmuting your mic. Good morning. I have uh, no further comments beyond those uh, mentioned by Matthew and Michael. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, Allison. Uh, Seeing no questions, moving on. Uh, Charles Gain. To the chair, uh, it does not appear anyone by that name is connected to the session. Okay, uh, we'll, uh, we'll then move on. Uh, number five, Irfan uh, Akram. Akram? They are connected. I am now unmuting your mic. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and, and Council. Uh, I don't have any comments beyond what has already been said unless there are any specific questions related to parking. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other uh, uh, questions to deputy? Any questions? Seeing none, uh, that exhausts our speakers list. Uh, check one more time for Charles Gain. No home. He's uh, Charles there? To the chair, uh, they are not. Okay, we'll bring it into committee, thank you. Uh, questions to staff? Seeing none, uh, speakers, uh, Councillor Nunziata. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have a motion that staff has as far as uh, addressing the parking. Um, they can put it on the screen. As the um, as the applicant mentioned, um, this is in the um, western area where we're going through revitalization in that community. We have a GO station and an UP Express. We also have the Eglinton line, and uh, we are um, in the community are working towards uh, revitalization all of, all of Weston, bringing in retail. Uh, we've been working on this application for a few years now, and uh, there are a number of other applications coming in in the future as well. 
So we welcome this application. Um, I think that this site in particular has been an eyesore for many, many years. A lot of complaints uh, on this site. So I'm very pleased uh, with the applicant working with city staff in my office. And um, my motion is on the screen. So I'm asking members of council to support my motion and support the staff recommendation. Thank you very much, Councilor Nunziata. Um, any, uh, any further speakers to the item? Seeing none, the motion uh, will put up on the screen or we just seen it. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Oh, and item as amended? All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Okay, uh, moving right along to EY 24.5, Algonquin to West Planning and Streetscape Study Final Report. Uh, we have a few speakers on this. Um, so uh, we will start with Bob Cook on behalf of the Board of Directors, First Church of Christ. Hello. Hi, Bob. Hello. Hi, sir. Good, good, good morning. Uh, welcome to committee. You have five minutes to give a deputation. And at the end, uh, committee members may have some questions. Um, I'll start your five minutes. You may begin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you to the community council for the opportunity to share our thoughts on this important topic. Our, our interest in this item derives from our membership in the place of worship located at the northeast corner of Islington and Eglinton, diagonally across from Richview Collegiate and next to the planned below grade LRT station on the northwest corner. Our church doesn't lie directly next to the Eglinton Road bed. It's set back just a little bit, but it's nevertheless quite visible and a beloved site for motorists and pedestrians alike. I say it's beloved not just because it's a lovely stone building constructed in the 1930s, almost a century ago now. It's also beloved because it looks over a stand of mature trees, graciously spaced and likely planted in the 1930s and 1940s by the original homeowner. These trees are at their peak of size and splendor, including maple, oak, beech, and tamarack. They should be designated by the city as a special stand containing more than 20 heritage trees of historical significance. It's also beloved as one of the few remaining green spaces in the entire area, and it can be appreciated not from one, but two major streets. Ask anyone who's lived in the area and they will tell you how much it means to them while they're sitting in their cars waiting for a red light to turn green to look over at that pastoral setting and find inner solace from the site. Several years ago, the organization known as Build Toronto put out public tenders to sell the entire strip of land from Royal York Road to Islington and beyond to developers who in all likelihood would have planned to cut down those trees and build row townhouses just a few meters from the sidewalk. Thank goodness that tendering process was shut down. We now have before us an opportunity to make things right. All the lands along the north side of Eglinton, every last bit of it, should be designated as open space, green space, natural space in perpetuity. So this is a rare opportunity to keep some open natural space in an area that's gone from countryside to bricks and mortar so quickly. The history of the original stone building gives just some indication of how fast Etobicoke was overtaken by the relentless construction juggernaut of the latter half of the 20th century. Back in the 1930s, few people envisaged dense development on these lands. In fact, the footprint of the city of Toronto was so very far away that the farmland along Eglinton was divided into five acre lots. You may ask why? Well, it's because the optimum market as seen by the best minds of the day was a moneyed upper class of people looking to build large country estates. After the Second World War, everyone suddenly switched, lemming-like, to building acres and acres of dense single-family housing. Imagine if that stone house had not ever been built, just what that northeast corner would look like today. 
passers-by would be staring at the backside of houses, backyards, and rather uninviting-looking fences in various states of repair. What a bleak corner it would have become. So let's not repeat the mistakes of the past. Protect the land along the north side of Eglinton, every step of it. Protect it in perpetuity as a pedestrian-friendly and bicycle-friendly and wheelchair friendly and stroller friendly green corridor. Thank you, Community Council, for your attention. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, any questions to the deputy? Yeah, Mr. Chair, may I, uh, may I ask um, uh, a, a couple of brief questions? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you to Mr. Cook for speaking to us today. Um, perhaps one day I will uh, you, you will allow me to take a closer look at the church uh, when, when COVID has passed and things are safe. Um, I, I know the building and I recognize it. And to my uh, members of community council, if you can picture the, uh, the north east corner of Eglinton and Islington, you can see the church uh, there. Uh, Mr. Cook, could you tell us the address of the, the place of worship? Yes, it's 448. It's, on, it's an Eglinton address, number 4480 Eglinton Avenue West. Okay, and I say that just so the staff can hear that. Um, I, I didn't notice the, the church called out in the report with respect to heritage, and I wondered, are there any heritage designations or any, any work towards um, uh, a heritage recognition for the building so far? I believe it's got sort of the lowest level status, which is it's merely on a list uh, kind of an interest list, but it's um, it's a building built uh, by a doctor, lovely stone structure, uh, and we've preserved every aspect of it over, over the you know over its 90 years of of life. And I'd be happy to give you a tour of it. Um, it's it's such a distinct building; it'd be a, same, a shame to hide it uh, with townhouses from the road, and a shame to cut down these lovely trees, which are at diameter at breast height, it's got to be 30 to 36 inches on most of these trees. It's just something you don't see these days. And would you say that the the right-of-way, which is kind of like the front lawn of the house, works in conjunction with the house? Like, I just, I know that sometimes the, the city lands on a map don't show what the real condition is, where everything works together. Is that a fair assertion? Yeah. I think so. It's a very wide right of way. The city um, sort of closed the books on any changes to it uh, about a decade or so ago. Uh, but it's a very wide right of way and a very narrow strip of land that was owned by Bill Toronto, and I think far too narrow to be developed upon appropriately. Uh, so just let's just keep it all in green space and uh, and enjoy what what's there. In my final question, um, the report talks a lot about various heritage attributes along Eglinton Avenue, and there's different grades of them, right? Like recognized properties, mm -hmm. properties that could or should be listed. And then some of the other ones it is just sort of a catch-all that says, you know, for properties in the area, um, you know, there can be a conversation with heritage planning staff. And I wondered if, if you yourself or others involved with the church could make yourself available to staff, if you would be willing to do that, to talk a little bit about the details of this site and they can figure out some of the framework around it and, and uh, what the next steps could be. I'd, be. I'd be delighted to do that. And I know there's other members that care deeply about preserving this, this building as it is. Great, thank you very much. You're thank, welcome. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Any further questions to the deputy? Seeing none, thank you very much, Bob, for your deputation. Uh, moving You're on uh, to Gary Fine, Fineway Properties Limited. to the chair, uh, that speaker is connected. I am now unmuting their mic. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Gary. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us at committee today. You have five minutes to give a deputation. And then following that, uh, there may be some questions of you from committee members. You may begin. Sure, thank you for letting me speak. Um, I'm, uh, we own the plaza at the corner of Wincott and Waterford. Uh, it's a small plaza, it's got second cup in it, and it's got a number of other uh, tenants, a hairdresser, and so on. Um, we had been speaking with um, 
build Toronto or create TO now uh, about uh, purchasing the corner uh, immediately to the south of us. Uh, this site, uh, for your information, uh, although the rest of the street is quite uh, dense with uh, trees and so on, um, this is an area where, at the moment, uh, Hydro are parking all their trucks on it, and I think they're doing some work um, south of, uh, you know, south of Eglinton. And uh, we had rented an area from Build Toronto that we, uh, for about 10 or 15 years already, where we have... Um, uh, we have some parking, additional parking for our uh, for our plaza. Um, what we had uh, been speaking with uh, Bill uh, Toronto Create TO with regard to uh, purchasing, as I say, this corner and adding um, some additional uh, an additional building. Uh, a couple of things that uh, we had incorporated in our design, which we had had an architect do. We came up with a three-story building that's uh, right at um, the south side of the property, so it would be on facing Eglinton, so it would have the least effect possible on houses, uh, single-family houses, which are on uh, Waterford. Um, as well, um, our design was, as I say, a three-story building. The main floor was going to be retail. There were two stories above it that were going to be office, um, connected with an elevator, which would allow, um, for example, um, health care uses, uh, which I think are important in the area, and there are not a lot of spaces uh, for them. Uh, the parking would be behind, it would be at grade, but it would be behind the building. And uh, in other words, between this building this new uh, proposed building and our existing plaza, the entrance to, uh, to this development would be coming from our existing entrance on Wincott. So again, you'd have no um, confusion or interruption uh, with access to Eglinton. Um, and uh, the LRT, uh, from what I understand, they were gonna have a secondary entrance to the LRT at this corner. So we could accommodate that. In terms of the property itself, there are only, uh, I think there were two um, trees, I'm not sure, I'm not an expert on, on trees, but uh, two uh, coniferous trees. Uh, and then there's one right at, uh, uh, they're the only two trees that are really on the property and the rest of it is, is sort of unkempt grass, to be honest. Uh, and then there's our parking lot. So. Um, we feel that uh, if we do something there, we can do something that will be useful to the neighborhood. Um, it won't certainly affect any of the any of the trees, and I heard the previous uh, speaker, speaker of course, um, and uh, the doors to the to this proposed new building. There will be a door facing uh, facing toward uh, Eglinton so people will be able to access it right from coming off the LRT, and there will also be a door on the north side of the building, in other words, the back, for the tenants, and an access to the office space from the back, and uh, that way um, it'll work, it'll be viable from a retail, a retail uh, point of view. Um, I think that's probably the only stuff that I have in addition to uh, the note that I had uh, sent in to you previously. Uh, I'm certainly happy to, um, you know, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions about it, and uh, I hope you'll consider what I've said. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gary. Uh, looking to committee members uh, for any questions. Seeing none, thank you for coming out uh, today, Gary. Uh, moving on to our third speaker, Brad Dixon. Yes, hello, councillors. Hi, uh, Brad. Uh, good morning. Good. Uh, you'll, you have five minutes to give a deputation, and then after that, you may have some questions. You may begin. Thank you. Speaking specifically with regards to the property that Gary was speaking of, I noticed with all the other properties that uh, are in this recommendation are all fully treed lots. We've already lost a lot of green space, open green space along Eglinton, given up to developers, et cetera. We, of course, 
have not had an increase of open green space. We've seen in the area how quickly green space can go when we look at uh, the school that was there that was going to be sold off. So my recommendation or my hope would be that that section would be included as parkland, as that would be feasible to be included as a park if need be, as opposed to a building, which we have tons of in the area. I noticed that uh, residents along Eglinton further um, east put forward that they wanted to keep the integrity of their community. And that was recognized by the uh, council and recognize that planning should put that in, in place. So the integrity of Etobicoke in this area has been open green space. And as I say, we are losing that and, and we have given up a lot of that. So rather than having it go more into more commercial buildings, more parking, more et cetera, you know, I would recommend making it part of the green space that's being recommended, recommended now. I do know that Metrolinx may want to put a transformer or an exit there. That's fine. Obviously, they have a say in it, but I don't think we should wait until what they are deciding. I think a benefit for the community is to actually include it in this whole green space and therefore protect it as an open green space. Obviously, Metrolinx does have a say and they can turn around and, 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 and take land as they need. Uh, but as I say, green space is becoming few and far between. And as I said, uh, Silver Creek School, with all that green space, had the potential at any point to be sold off, as we have seen. So as we get more people in the potential building that's coming up on Wincott, uh, again, I know they're recommending a small little park, but again, we are limited in our open green space. So that's what I'm suggesting. Thank you very much, uh, Brad. Um, any questions of committee members? Seeing none, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Um, so that, uh, that exhausts the speakers list. I'll bring it into committee. Questions to staff? Uh, Councillor Holliday, questions to staff? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I wondered if uh, city planning staff is available Just give a moment for them to be ready. Um, my question is uh, relatively simple. Um, in the the extensive report, there is some discussion about Metrolink's infrastructure. Um, I know that, or I wonder if staff could confirm that there there is public records or public design plates which show an exit stair building at the corner of Wincott and Eglinton. Could we so confirm that? Yes, you're correct. They're proposing an uh, emergency exit building as well as a tractor power substation, which is quite a large uh, one story building. Okay. And so they're looking to do that in that vicinity, Metrolink. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and I wondered if, um, if staff could just confirm the physical configuration and I'll describe it. If you can tell me if I'm correct, because I'd like my colleagues to know um, in the run between Kipling and Islington on the north side of Eglinton, we have a variety of things. At Kipling and Eglinton, we have a, a strip of townhouses on the north side. We have a, a seniors focused building, which has been recently approved by community council. Um, we have the item that we just deferred, which is the 250 Wincott development. And that is according to the city planning report about 570 units. Uh, then we have Wincott. Uh, we have a small parcel of land that was discussed by the speakers today. And then we have a wood lot, which is being protected. And finally, um, uh, the corner of Islington and uh, Eglinton, which is the future site of the Metrolinx Islington station. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Thank you. Um, and today's report uh, provides a whole variety of recommendations about the uniqueness of the Eglinton corridor with the theme of protecting some of the open spaces. Is that a fair, very brief and probably not justifiable summary, but at a, at a high level? Yeah, you are correct. And finally, the two salient points um, coming out of the recommendations of this report would be to protect the woodlot which is located um, on Eglinton Avenue on the north side, which is midway between, uh, between Wincott and Islington. And it 
spans almost that entire area, but it's a big wood lot. And then the other wood lot is at the corner of Kipling and Eglinton. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. As part of the, the study, when we did the community meetings, the community was um, uh, really wanted to preserve those wood lots and saw it as, as a, a unique feature for the corridor. And finally, the Metrolinx has been focusing their infrastructure on the north side of Eglinton Avenue. And, and the reason for that is, as I understand, there's a, a major gas main which runs along the south side. So they can't do much digging and it's very difficult to locate the structures to support the Eglinton West LRT. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, I think that's all my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you to uh, Louisa Galley. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, any further questions to staff on this item? Seeing none, we'll uh, move to speakers. Councillor Holloway. I do, Mr. Chair, I have a motion. If I may ask the clerks to put that on the screen. Uh, and that is to um, extend the open space allocation um, on the stretch between Wincott and Islington and uh, convert uh, some of that open area to parkland. Um, just to summarize, I will say uh, thank you very much to all of the people involved. There's many, many years of work that have gone into the Eglinton um, West planning. Uh, this is a very, very important document that will sculpt the future of this uh, roadway. Um, but today at Council, we're going to do two really important things. We are going to protect two woodlots at the corner of Kipling and Eglinton and uh, roughly at the corner of Kipling and Wincott. There is a small piece of land between the woodlot and Wincott. And as, uh, I'm sorry, I should actually also say thank you to Sabrina Salatino as well for all of uh, her work on this particular file. Um, back to that woodlot and that piece of land, um, it is an open space. Uh, this will create a park out of it. But the important thing to know is that Metrolinx is looking to put infrastructure and it is going to affect that open space. So there's a way to organize uh, the residual space on 4600 Avenue, Eglinton Avenue West into a parkland, allow Metrolinx to put in the infrastructure that they need and allow that woodlot to be preserved. Because if we don't allow something to happen on 4600, and the only place that Metrolinx can put a traction power station in an exit stair would be right into the woodlot. Uh, and that would be very difficult. So I think that this allows the best of all worlds to occur. The other thing to note is the 250 Wincott proposal that we had all those speakers lined up for is a really, really big development. And it's over the old plaza site. One of the things that that report notes is that they need um, their parkland allocation is over 4,000 square meters. That's not something they're going to be able to achieve on site. It's just too big. Um, so by creating parkland immediately across the street, and I mean Wincott is not uh, is 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 a you know is a is a narrower street. It, it's right across the street from it. All of this works together. Um, I know there are two different reports, but uh, hopefully members understand the logic in doing all of this. And uh, I just wish to thank everybody involved in helping me sort out these motions and get all of these pieces into place to what I think is going to be a really, really exciting uh, and, and helpful change to the neighborhood. And I think it reflects uh, most of what we heard today from the speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, any further uh, speakers to the item? Seeing none, uh, I'll just take uh, one second and, uh, you know, I know, I know the, uh, the area quite well and um, I uh, no doubt uh, will support uh, Councillor Holiday's uh, uh, motion uh, on this item as well as uh, the entire item. Thank you. So, uh, okay, Councillor Holiday's motion will come up on the screen. Um, as we get that displayed. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed, seeing none. And then uh, item is amended. All those in favor? Opposed, that carries. Okay, moving on to 
uh, EY 24.7, 2950, and 2970 Lake Shore Boulevard West. Official plan and zoning amendment application request for direction regarding local planning appeal tribunal hearing. Uh, missing Councillor Grimes' ward. Um, I believe we have two speakers on the item. Um, uh, first speaker is Keg Peggy Mulder, uh, Lake Shore Planning Council Corp. Hello. Hello, Peggy. Your light is unmuted. Uh, good morning, councillors. Good morning, Peggy. Uh, welcome to committee. Uh, you have five minutes to the pew, and then you may have some questions after. You may begin. Thank you. Um, there is no legal basis for approving either a nine story building or a six story building for 2950 2970 Lakeshore Boulevard West. The site is governed by site and area specific policy 21, that is SASP 21, and zoning bylaw 569 2013. Please refer to information provided in my letter to Community Council. SASP 21 is explicit with respect to building heights, the 45 degree angular plane, and the maximum density of 3.0. Building heights should not exceed four stories. It is only west of 22nd Street and Long Branch where a six story building is permitted. SASP 21 was approved by the Ontario Municipal, Municipal Board in 2006 as part of the Toronto official plan. Zoning bylaw 569 2013 for the area covered by SASP 21 in New Toronto confirms a height limit for buildings of 14 meters, which is approximately four stories, an application of a 45 degree angular plane. To be clear, figure A in the urban design guidelines referred to and relied upon in the staff action report contains numerous errors concerning right of way widths, parking, and building heights. It misrepresents SASP 21 and cannot be relied upon for any decision for the site. The mid rise building performance standards also cannot be relied upon since in June 2016, Council decided that the performance standards are not intended to be used to challenge area specific policies and bylaws, particularly with respect to building heights and matters of transition. Section 5.3.1 of the official plan states, the Planning Act requires that all bylaws enacted and public works undertaken by the city conform to its official plan. A recent decision by LPAT provides a legal precedent where the zoning bylaw was upheld, and LPAT refused to approve an eight story building for a site where zoning permitted only six stories. Developers should not be encouraged to continue to purchase properties knowing the planning legislation does not permit what they want to build. Planning staff and councillors should not continue to negotiate behind closed doors, essentially seeking ways to defeat, to defeat the law. City councillors do not have the required planning expertise to conduct oversight over planning staff and overall planning for the city. The solution is for council to, to create a city planning commission consisting of a nine member panel of experts and to delegate all planning decisions to the commission. The planning commissioners cannot be lobbied. In 1936, 85 years ago, New York City established a city planning commission to provide the structure for comprehensive planning in New York City, replacing a haphazard planning and zoning system that functioned principally through the interaction of interest groups and political forces. For the first time, New York City had a professional agency with a single purpose, to serve the people of New York by planning for the entire city. The New York City Planning Commission can review a complete de development application and provide a decision within 150 days. The Toronto Planning Commission will receive input from the affected community council from ward residents and will hold a public hearing where planning staff present their findings and developers answer questions from the commissioners. There is no litigation. The Planning Commission determines whether the application complies with planning le legislation and then approves, approves with modifications or declines the development application. Their decision is final. While in Toronto, developers can continue to appeal to LPAT, it is highly unlikely that LPAT would hear an appeal of a decision made by a nine-member panel of experts. If city councillors want to leave a legacy of good planning for Toronto, 
they have the authority to create a Toronto City Planning Commission. In closing, there is no legal basis for approving either a nine story building or a six story building for the site. Please, therefore, do the right thing and decide to uphold official plan SASP 21 and the zoning bylaw. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Peggy. Uh, any uh, questions to the deputy? Seeing none, uh, thank you for coming out to committee. Um, number, number uh, next speaker, uh, Paul Chomick. To the chair, that speaker is not connected. Okay. Um, okay, and then we'll uh, bring it into committee. Um, any questions to staff? Seeing none. Um, Councillor Holiday, on behalf of Councillor Grimes, to speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will move the staff recommendations contained in the report. Um, and for the convenience of my colleagues, I believe it's a refusal report. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor Holiday. Any further speakers to the item? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Next item, uh, EY 24.9, 2345 Finch Avenue West and 3415C, 3499C Western Road, Official Plan and Zoning Amendment Application Preliminary Report. Um, no speakers on the item. Um, Councillor uh, Peruzza, you held down the item. Questions to staff? Councillor Peruzza, are you with us? Councillor Peruzza, do you have any questions to staff on EY 24.9? Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, five minutes, uh, go I ahead. I do. Uh, uh, please, yeah, so, um, uh, just, just very quickly. Uh, so the submission uh, that um, that has been uh, provided is not complete. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it's not complete. Okay. It, so is it typical that you would bring forward a preliminary report when the application itself uh, has it hasn't um, hasn't um, uh, you haven't determined uh, the application complete. Um, it's typical to provide a report to community council. Uh, every single case is different, however, but it's typical to provide a report to community council. So you, you so you provide a report uh, similar to this one, me saying, "Look, it, it's not an, a complete application." However. Uh, when and if we do decide it's complete, then we'll take it to the next step, i.e. a preliminary uh, meeting, right? That is correct. Okay. But you don't do that in every case, correct? Um, I. It's typically what we city staff would do. I wouldn't be able to comment on in situations that we haven't done it, but it's typical that we, we would okay. provide well, a preliminary well, let me report. Okay. So, so let me ask you the question another way. Uh, it, it, would it be appropriate for, for us to set this aside uh, or, or, for example, defer it back to you and say, bring it back uh, when it is, when you have determined that an application is complete? Um, I, I don't think that would be necessary. This report is preliminary in nature. It's an information report with actions that speaks to uh, setting up a community meeting once it's complete. Uh, uh, the information that is contained in the report is preliminary and subject to further review. Okay, so so whether we uh, defer it back to you or simply um, receive it today uh, with the instructions that you have asked for in the report uh, with your recommendations, uh, there there is essentially uh, no no difference. 
it's my opinion there would be no difference. Uh, the recommendation speaks to scheduling a community consultation meeting once the application is deemed complete. Other than perhaps maybe, you know, a month difference, meaning like if you, if next week uh, they finalize their, uh, their, um, how do you say, their uh, application, uh, then you would bring forward a report in June saying now it's complete, let's schedule it for a preliminary hearing. Other than perhaps um, some, some time, that, that could be a difference, correct? That, that could be a difference. Um, the applicant has provided additional information to potentially uh, uh, have staff deem the application complete. We are in the midst of reviewing that documentation. Um, but you are correct in that once it's deemed complete, uh, uh, that, that's the only difference. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yep. Um, thank you. Um, is, is, do you want to? Do you want to add anything uh, for us in, as it relates to this application, or is, or is that it? Uh, Councillor, I have no additional comments. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Councillor Peruta. Uh, any further questions to, uh, to staff? Seeing none, uh, go to speakers. Councillor Peruta. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So I, I, I do have a motion um, and, and uh, I'll, I'll place that before you. Uh, basically, um, it's an amendment to, to the application. Uh, so so what, you're, what we're seeing here today uh, is- Councillor Peruta, uh, Councillor Peruta, I'll, yeah. I'll hold your time. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the motion's not ready. Um, they just, uh, clerks just received it now. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I thought that they did, they did have it. I apologize. Nope. Um, so maybe do, we'll Do just... you want to take, do you want to take a, do you want to take a pause for a sec and sure. go on to something else and then come back to it? Yeah. Are, are there any, are there any further, or any other one want to speak to this item? That may kill some time. Seeing none. Okay. We'll hold down the item for now and then we'll come back to it. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Okay, so uh, so we're just going to hold that down. We'll move on to EY 24.11, 4340 Bloor Street West Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Preliminary Report. Um, okay, item 11. We do have uh, a speaker on the item. Uh, Mark uh, Creedon. Yeah, hello. Hi, Mark. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to committee. You have five minutes for uh, to give a deputation, and then there uh, may be some questions of you. You may begin. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good morning, members of council and city staff. I presume you have our written submission before you. My name is Mark Creedon, and I am here today representing the Markland Wood Homeowners Association, which is a volunteer organization which was formed in 1962 representing homeowners in the original neighborhood of Markland Wood. 90% of the 1,200 homes in Markland pay voluntary membership fees to our association each year. A key objective of our association is to further the orderly development of Markland Wood in a manner that preserves and enhances our neighborhood. And in that capacity, I'm here on behalf of our community to voice the following initial concerns regarding the 4340 Blur Street West proposal. Number one, the density of the proposal is far too high for the site, and the suite count is beyond any semblance of resemblance of reasonableness, being immediately adjacent to an elementary school, Millwood Junior School, and almost diagonally across the line from an additional elementary school, St. Clement Catholic School. With the addition of 234 new units fronting Bloor Street West to the infill department project of 240 Markland Drive, which is just down the street a little bit on Bloor, a, proposal, a proposed addition of another 308 new units at the 4340 Bloor Street West site would total 542 units within a kilometer, which would be a substantial departure from a reasonable density in the community. Number two, the entryway to and from the proposed development is off Bloor Street, a short distance from the traffic light of the intersection of Blur Street West and Mill Road. 
This would put a significant amount of stress on the movement of traffic in the area, specifically during peak hours when people are leaving for and returning from work, part of which overlaps with the hours of children who are going to and from school. Number three, the setbacks as listed in the City of Toronto Project data sheet being zero on the, on the south, half a meter on the east, and five meters west are insufficient considering the uh, high pedestrian and vehicle traffic area of Blur Street West and Mill Road. The two schools adjacent to or a short half a block away and a commercial plaza, including a drive through fast food restaurant, McDonald's, directly across from the site. Number four, the footprint of the proposal is extreme in that it encroaches on all the land surrounding the current 15-story building, the majority of which is now green space. Eliminating green space to this degree would result in the removal of many older trees contributing to the canopy of the area. Markland Wood is an older, stable neighborhood requiring sensible and thoughtful infill development. It is known for its green space and includes an historic forest very close to the 4340 site. Destroying green space to this degree would not be in the character of the Markland Wood neighborhood. Number five, the Markland Wood Homeowner Association has reviewed the Toronto Lands Corporation March 1st, 2021 correspondence to the City of Toronto Planning Department. We are in full support of their findings concerning shadowing and wind conditions and are specifically concerned with the safety of Millwood Junior School students and staff being uh, negatively impacted by the increased slipperiness of freezing icy conditions and subsequent muddy thawing conditions in the spring caused by the addition of another tower. This danger will be acute during winter and spring months. As stated in the Toronto Lands Corporation letter, shadowing and wind impact must be mitigated. It is also of note that the YMCA operates a full-time daycare at Millwood site with children as young as two years of age. These young children would also be negatively impacted. In summary, the Markland Wood Homeowner Association has provided what it has identified as its initial concerns in this document. It reserves the right to identify additional concerns in the future. The volunteer board of Markland Wood Homeowners Association has worked with developers, our councillor Stephen Holliday, and the City of Toronto planners in the past to come to an agreement on proposed infill in the neighbourhoods of Markland Wood, specifically with the developer of the townhouses complex at the southeast corner of Blur Street West in Mill and more recently with the current developer of 240 Markland Drive, Carteria Private Equities, Inc. The volunteer board of the Markland Wood Homeowners Association prefers to reach agreements with all stakeholders in these types of initiatives and welcomes the opportunity to meet with all and collaborate with the various parties to this end. The association requires requests. Sir, if I, I, if I can ask you to wrap up. Okay, uh, then that's, that's it, just that we want to be uh, notified of any resubmissions, appeals, and other matters, et cetera. And I just wanted to make a thank you to all of you for listening to our concerns, and especially to Councillor Stephen Holliday, who's helped us with the 230 Marklands to come to a satisfactory conclusion. That's okay. It. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Councillor Holliday uh, has some questions for you. So I'll turn over the floor to Councillor Holliday. Okay. Uh, good morning, Mr. Creedon. Um, thank you for speaking to us today. I Thank wondered you. if you could just tell the committee uh, at to what level of concern is this development to the Markland Wood Homeowners Association and of course the, by extension the neighborhood. This this is a, a, a very huge concern. This doesn't feel like um, intensification. It feels more like an invasion. And I think as just as you, Councillor Holiday, was looking at two sites that had to be considered as a gestalt. We have to look at the 240 Markland uh, development, which is less than a kilometer down Blur Street West, at the same time as 4340, which is creating 504 new units. So we're talking well over a thousand new people coming to the area. Uh, this, and and we, we, if you remember from the 2013 flood in our area, when we were under tremendous amount of water, that was with the existing population, with the existing sewage, the sanitary sewers and the storm sewers haven't changed. 
uh, the population is going to be increasing. The schools are going to be impacted by a tremendous number of new children. Uh, the, the traffic is going to be increased. So this is this is going to be a hot issue. Uh, uh, Mr. Creedon, uh, you, you, you're aware that this is a preliminary report, uh, but you felt it important to come out and speak on behalf of the community. Um, as we begin this, as we begin this journey, um, are there any uh, key messages that you'd like to uh, let people know about that we'll be doing studying and doing work on this, with respect to what Mill Road South is like um, for traffic and the intersection of Mill Road and Blue Earth? Is there anything you'd like to put out there that sometimes is information that doesn't come forward in technical studies, but but ought to be thought about as we go through this process? It's a very good question, Mr. Holliday. Uh, Mill Road and Blur uh, is accident central. There have been many, many accidents there with the current uh, situation. When we started adding tremendous numbers of more cars coming through there, and especially with the way the entry point is being put in their proposal, uh, it's almost like a designed accident. Are you there any concerns? So there's one thing is is pressure from traffic and more density, but are you concerned about even the built form or the sight lines? I think you mentioned there's a zero setback and just there, what the configuration will be like uh, with respect to that intersection. Well, it's going to be coming out. We have a, a, a newspaper in our neighborhood called the Marklander, and we're going to be putting a 3D picture of it in there. Uh, and it's going to be hideous. Uh, it's going to look like downtown Toronto where you have a you know, building meeting sidewalk with, with no setback at all on the, on the south side and very little on the east side. Uh, we have uh, residential homes, one, one and a half story, two story homes right across the street from this. So although this is considered an apartment, a neighborhood going along Blur Street, uh, it's also intersecting with a school, two schools and residential homes. So it's not in the character of the Marklin Wood neighborhood as, as it's proposed now. We're not saying not to have this building developed, but just not this way. Thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you very much for your questions. Thank you everybody for listening. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Any further questions to the uh, deputy? Seeing none, uh, we'll move it into committee. Questions to staff. Seeing none, uh, speakers to the item. Uh, Councillor Holliday. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, and uh, thank you to the deputy. I know it's not always typical that a speaker comes forward on a preliminary report, uh, but the neighborhood are extremely concerned with this development, uh, and this is the beginning of a journey, um, one that I'm familiar with with this association. Um, there are some um, elements to the location of this building and the sight lines and the setback. And if you've ever visited Mill Road during school drop off and pick up, you have the, the sending of countless cars of people dropping children off. And it's not to say it's disorderly, it's just busy. Uh, you've got TTC buses going through there and you've got an intersection uh, with a history of collisions, um, which is a very, very complicated discussion. Um, but to say that people are concerned is probably an understatement. Um, and I look forward to working with the neighborhood um, on this particular proposal to uh, to address all of the concerns. Um, and I will just uh, say I'm also looking forward to staff in articulating the notice for the meeting. Um, again, how we had worked before in the past, there's always work to be done during COVID uh, to make sure that the information is get out. Uh, the information gets out in the mail out so that people adequately understand what the proposal is and understanding their limitations to access to technology um, and to a, a public format meeting that is physical, whereas it may have to be electronic and uh, getting the factors for success set up ahead of time. Uh, so thank you very much. And I will be moving the staff recommendations in the report. And uh, again, looking forward to working with planning for the, the notice area and the notice uh, design. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any uh, any further or um, any further speakers to the item? Seeing none. All those in favor of the item? Opposed? That carries. Okay, we're going to uh, head back to EY twenty four point nine. Uh, Councillor, uh, please, we have your motion ready. 
Uh, so, so uh, five no, 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 Mr. Chair, the motion is not ready. There's an element to it that, that's missing. So maybe if we can just oh. continue to hold it down for a bit oh. uh, and uh, go, go on with the agenda, and then we'll, I'll come back to it, and I'll let you know when it's ready. I no, apologize for that. No problem, Councillor Peritas. That okay. just gave me the Thank thumbs you. up, but we'll, uh, we'll continue yeah. to hold it down. Um, okay, okay, moving on to EY 24.13, request for fence exemption to the Toronto Municipal Code, Chapter 447, 102 Lamar Drive. Um, we do not have uh, speakers on this item, uh, so we'll bring it into committee. Questions to staff? Seeing none, uh, speakers, uh, Councillor Peruzza. Councillor Peruzza, 102 Lamar Drive, fence exemption. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, on this one here, so I apologize. I, I do, I, I have a motion um, uh, uh, to, to, to move, um, uh, which is on the screen there. Um, uh, there's a bit of a preamble that describes the, uh, 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 the motion, but uh, uh, I would move that. Uh, th this is a, a motion that uh, hopefully will uh, will broker, uh, you know, some, um, uh, you know, uh, effect, um, uh, you know, the, the neighbors to, um, uh, to be able to, 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 to coexist a little better um, and, uh, and, and move it forward while at the same time uh, giving both of them uh, some, uh, uh, some extended uh, privacy. So uh, that's the motion that's before you, Mr. Chair, and uh, I hope you support it, okay? Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Peruta. Any further speakers uh, to the item? Uh, Seen... uh, Mr. Chair, j just to check with you, uh, I know that w that one of the uh, 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 one of the, uh, the, the 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 parties involved wanted to speak to the committee this morning. They have not registered with you, correct? I, I hate to miss them. They, I can't they... see everybody that's logged into. They have yeah. not, but we will do. We will double check that. I'm I'm getting. Uh, Nope, we, we do not have anyone okay. registered. Okay. Fair, fair enough. Okay, then, then I'm happy to move that motion, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Seeing no further speakers, all those in favor of Councillor Peruzza's motion, oppose, that carries. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, members of the committee, uh, we had a technical issue um, with one of the items we previously considered, uh, EY 24.7 um, in Councillor Grimes' ward. Uh, there is a speaker uh, that would like to speak to the committee on this. Um, so with the committee's indulgence, uh, I'll place a motion to reopen the item. Um, so this is for 2950 to 2970 Lakeshore Boulevard West official in zoning amendment application. All those in favor of reopening the item, that carries. So I'll go to speakers. Um, uh, so Paul Chomek, are you available? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you very much, Paul, for joining us. Sorry about those technical issues. Uh, committee's happy to hear your deputation. You have five minutes, and then following that, there may be some questions of you. You may go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman Ford and members of Community Council. The, the issue we're facing here is the validity of a site and area specific policy along with two zoning bylaws. Fortunately, we have a recent LPAP decision for guidance and the decision for PL170069 confirmed the authority of the Mid-Rise Performance Standards Addendum that dates from 2016. And the addendum stipulates that the Mid-Rise Performance Standards cannot be used to challenge area-specific policies or zoning bylaws uh, particularly on, on height and transition 
uh, matters, and they do not convey an as of right height allowance. PL 170069 uh, refused to allow the requirements of a single zoning bylaw to be overruled. And LPAT uh, basically determined that the mid rise guidelines do not overtake loaning, local zoning provisions. Priority is given to area specific studies and policies over the more general mid rise guidelines. And the mid rise guidelines are not applied on exempted avenues where city led studies have resulted in previous area specific requirements, such as an SASP or a zoning bylaw. The tribunal found because the existing zoning bylaw passed in conformity with. Uh, the official plan, uh, it is compliant with both the provincial policy statement and the growth plan. And LPAT also noted that the 45 degree angular plane is the accepted standard for um, that sort of thing. The current application intends to override the SASP and two zoning bylaws on multiple levels despite the fact that uh, these uh, planning instruments were approved in compliance with the provincial policy statement and growth plan. Uh, the applicant incorrectly states that the word should in SASP 21 is only a suggestion when in fact the word should is the past tense of the word shall and therefore is a legal directive, just like the word should or will. Uh, the current application fails to uh, satisfy the angular plane requirements of the SASP zoning bylaws and official plan. And we really need to note that over 50% of the uh, project frontage onto Lakeshore Boulevard West is on an unusually shallow uh, building lot, which is only 23 meters deep. Citywide harmonized zoning bylaw limits the building heights to 14 meters maximum. And SASP 21 restricts building heights to only four stories east of 22nd Street, which is the new Toronto area. And that's because the right of way is only 26 or 27 uh, meters wide. Whereas west of 22nd Street, the uh, designated right of way is 36 meters wide. And that's why up to six story buildings are allowed west of 22nd Street um, uh, in specific areas that are noted in the SASP. Uh, El LPAT noted that extensive community con consultation was important in achieving the specific area-wide development requirements, uh, basically SASP and the zoning bylaws. And you would need uh, basically the same level of consultation to modify the SASP and the zoning bylaws. And presumably that would be through a five-year official plan review or a municipal comprehensive review. The Midrise uh, report itself recommends that mid-rise guidelines are not to be imposed on avenues that already have their own standards in place. And various city staff have also been previous noti previously notified that drawing A for the Lakeshore Urban Design Guidelines are totally incorrect and cannot be relied on. Uh, the guidelines are only suggestions in any event. They are not standards or requirements. And the guidelines cannot supersede uh, the requirements of SASP 21, which is the minimum standard. Oh, okay, Th thank you very much, Paul. Uh, any questions to the deputy? Seeing none, thank you uh, for your deputation. Uh, bring okay, in thank you, Councillor Ford. Thank you. Uh, bring in to committee, questions of staff. Seeing none uh, speakers, Councillor Grimes' area, uh, we'll go to Councillor Holliday. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, once again, I will move the staff recommendations of the report. Thank you. Staff recommendations so moved. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. We will uh, move to EY 24.15. 
Application to remove two city-owned trees, 146 Stanley Avenue. Uh, we do have speakers on this item. Um, uh, Ameka and Chick Udobi. Uh, hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Good, good, good morning. Um, thank you. Welcome to committee. Um, and uh, hope you're feeling uh, much better. I, I remember in the last time you were for our committee, you were battling COVID. So hope you're feeling better. Uh, you have five minutes um, and you may have some questions at the end. You may begin. Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling uh, much better. I still have a slight cough, but I'll, but I'll, I'll be fine. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for taking on this issue again. Um, I just uh, want to reiterate that my family and I are the uh, primary residents and owners of the property on 146 Stanley Avenue. Um, and I just want to give you uh, just a brief history of how we got to this uh, junction. Uh, we purchased the property in 2016, uh, fully intending to um, to knock it down and rebuild uh, um, our dream home really uh, at that site because we, we love that neighborhood and the kids go to school across the street from, from the house. Um, we uh, submitted a plan to the city planning department, uh, plan got approved uh, August of 2020. Uh, on that plan, it showed uh, both, uh, the city, uh, both city trees uh, on the path of the proposed driveway. Uh, this plan was approved by the planning department, and we literally two weeks after the approval, we started the uh, the project. We demolished the home and started construction of the uh, uh, the excavation and construction of the new home. Um, just to get to the root of the matter, um, the the both trees remain in the path of the proposed driveway. Um, the city um, forestry department, uh, much later, months after um, we had started the project, uh, rejected our true removal request. Um, we um, have since reached out. I have had uh, personal conversations with the city uh, manager who, who was responsible for the file, um, looking for a compromise on how we could proceed uh, with the trees uh, and how we can, you know, compensate for the removal if we have to, uh, just working with the city to get it done. They initially uh, compromised uh, offering uh, a solution where we could remove the, the birch, um, <clears throat> provided that the willow, which was a fully mature tree at this point, uh, was uh, retained. Uh, they would allow, at that point, they said they would allow some minor injury to the willow, provided uh, we kept it. Um, at that point in time, I, I was, uh, we, the willow was a special case because it had recently, um, not long before then, damaged the neighboring properties uh, on both sides of, uh, of my property on 146 Stanley. Uh, the roots had done some uh, foundational damage to um, 144's uh, foundation. It had killed a tree. Uh, on 144's uh, lot. Uh, it had damaged, uh, done some water damages as well to the home. I think, what's, uh, what's Edna's address? I think it's 140? 142. 142. Um, uh, her property as well. So this tree is, is a menace. It's, it's, there's, if you look at the city, we've called 311 on numerous occasions looking to get a solution for what we could do with this tree. It, it, I sent a photograph of the tree um, uh, for uh, our uh, April uh, 19th uh, community council uh, period. So I don't know if you guys still have it in your uh, mailbox, but if you could just look at it, um, it it's, it's a hazard uh, and it's a menace. But at this point, I, I need to move my project forward. We need to complete my home. The, the house is literally built. We've done everything to work around the tree. Um, and work with the city to protect that tree. Especially, and I, I keep saying that tree, I know it's two trees uh, on the menu, but really uh, the contention point was always the willow. The, the city had tentatively agreed to let us remove the birch. Um, but right now I need to move forward with my project. I need to complete my house, complete my driveway, move into my property. 
um, I offered uh, the city a compromise um, after uh, April 19th, uh, but they suggested that we continue with the community council. Uh, I, I hold it that the willow is still um, a hazard to the community. It's a hazard to the infrastructure, and I think it still has to go. Uh, but I am willing to move forward if I can get approval to just remove the birch at this point in time. We'll build a narrow driveway into the garage, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my statement. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, any any questions to the speaker? All right, to the deputy. Seen none. Uh, thank you very much for your deputation. Um, it is my understanding we have a, one more registered speaker, but they are not available. But I will I will just double check. Astrid Di Paolo. Is Astrid uh, with us today? To the chair, no one by that nope. name is connected to the meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so moving into committee, um, any questions to staff? Seen none. Uh, this is in Councilor Grimes' work, but I, I understand that Councilor Peruzza has taken carriage of this item. Councilor Peruzza? I... Councilor Peruzza? No, I, I don't think he can hear us. Um, okay. Well, Or I'll, I'll call upon Councillor Holiday. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Holiday, uh, would you take carriage of this item? Um, of course. Uh, uh, we'll just. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chair. I'll move the staff recommendations. Okay. Uh, staff recommendations so moved. All those in favor? Uh, opposed? That carries. Okay. And then uh, moving on to. Uh, re response to re uh, request a purchase portion of untraveled public lane main 127 King Street. Um, we do not, uh, no, we do have one deputant, um, uh, Kathy Algus da Silva. Algus da Silva. Kathy Algus da Silva. Are you with us? I am. Hi, Kathy. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the committee. Um, you'll have five minutes to give a deputation, and uh, then you may have some questions of committee members. Um, and um, I'm just going to pass the chair over to Councillor Holiday. I just have to step out of the committee room for one second. I'll be back momentarily. Uh, but I'll start your five minutes. You may begin. Acknowledge, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Um, my husband and I are actually the owners of 127 King Street, and uh, I appreciate for council. I appreciate that Council Nuliata brought this um, to council. Um, we are in the process of trying to obtain proper documentation and proper steps to build a garage at the back of our property. Um, we started this process back in 2017 um, by attempting to go through the proper channels, but we have hit. Um, barriers and red tape in the process of doing all this. Um, you know, we've we've been going to different um, departments in the city, um, and we spent now we're in year number five attempting to do this. Um, and we've been issued letters saying that um, you know the property at the back does not belong to us, which we fully understand. And we've put a letter forward back in um, 2019 in order for us to purchase the property. Um, and we've been told that we can't do that because it would cause a deadlock. But this at this point is not the issue because there are 17 other structures um, on my block that actually have existing um, a garages, sheds, or pools on this piece of property. So there is a deadlock already in place. Um, you know, we've we've been the homeowners here now for 13 years. Um, we have rebuilt our home in, inside. Uh, we went through all the appropriate channels to do so, but uh, we're having a very hard time because it's been five years and we can get through any um, proper, I guess, direction on what we can do with all this. Um, we were proposed to do a um, encroachment agreement, um, but unfortunately, 
um, that doesn't work for us because we are already um, when we purchased the property, this this area was already fenced in. There were existing already two sheds on this property. We've been maintaining this property now for 13 years. There was a massive um, elm tree at the back of the property. We called the city and we were told by forestry that this is private property and we had to pay for permits to actually um, take the tree down. We had to pay to actually get the tree removed. Um, so it's very confusing for us when one department's telling us that this is private property and all the liability and responsibility for anything that needs to happen is ours. But yet now that we want to build a garage, the city saying, no, it's our property. Um, you need to get our permission to do anything. And we don't even know where to start with this. And it's been very challenging for us. And we've been attempting to do this. And this is a five year process. We need to get this ball rolling and figure out what we need to do. If anything, we're taking the liability off the city and to maintain this property. And there's no access to any um, part of this laneway because there are structures both off of Elm and off of Pine Street. So I urge council to please allow us to purchase this, this piece of property and move forward so we can continue living in Weston because we love this neighborhood and move forward with this project. That's it on my end. For speaking to us. Yes, um, correct. Are there are there any questions of the deputy? Seeing none. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, I will ask Nancy Martins uh, if you can let me know if there are additional speakers since I don't have access to the speakers list. Our, okay, uh, Councillor uh, Back. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. No more speakers to the item. Uh, we'll bring it into committee. Any questions to staff? Seeing none uh, to speak, um, that would be uh, Councillor uh, Councilor Nunziata. Thank, thank you, uh, Councillor Ford. So I do have a motion that was sent to staff, put on the screen. As um, Kathy, as Kathy has mentioned, um, this sliver of um, laneway, um, the city didn't even know that we had this property. Um, wasn't aware of it until until well, 27 King Street uh, came forward. Um, access to the laneway, there's no um, access to the laneway. The city has not maintained this. There's been fences and garages and sheds built over the years. And it wasn't until uh, the uh, the owner at 127 King Street came forward that the city is, is suddenly saying, "Oh, this is a this is a, a city laneway, which they haven't maintained, or there's not even access for the city to go in and maintain." Um, so that's why I'm moving this motion uh, to members of the committee. And as Kathy mentioned, she's been working on it for quite a few years now, and uh, she wants to proceed. Um, so thank you to members of council. Thank you very much, Councilor Nunziana. Um, any further speakers to the item? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Carried. Okay, um, moving on to EY 24.25, and this is an item of new business. Uh, temporary signage permit for annual Topco Rotary in Toronto Rib Fest 2021. Um, this is in uh, Councillor Grimes' area, uh, Councillor Holliday. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am prepared to move the recommendations contained in Councillor Grimes' letter. I may remind the committee that um, I know that I've moved a similar motion uh, over the last number of years in recognition of the Canada Day Rib Fest. It just, it has moved locations uh, due to COVID this year. And that's why the letter has come from Councillor Grimes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor Holiday. Any further speakers? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, that carries. Um, now I'll bring us back to our last item, uh, EY 24.9, 2345 Finch Avenue West and 3415C to 3499C West Road 
official plan and zoning amendment application preliminary report. Uh, Councilor Peruzza, we'll go back to you. Um, it's my understanding the motion is good to go. Uh, Councilor Peruzza, you're, you're muted. I believe that that uh, that the um, that the motion has been finalized now. Um, hold on, sorry. Um, clerks are advising me that they have not received any revisions from you. So what they have is the um, how it was uh, before. Uh, so there's a there's a final revision coming. I believe the. Uh, uh, is, the, this, uh, is this, a, can, can is this, Councillor is this, is this how it's supposed to be as displayed? Um, uh, yes, there's a third, uh, there should be, there was a third clause, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, can I just uh, just ask to see? Maybe we can take a five-minute pause, and and I'll get it for you, and uh, and then we'll uh, we'll be able to finalize that. Okay, um, Councilor Pritchett, we'll take a five-minute uh, recess. Um, we are at the end of the agenda, um, so if you can speak with yeah. clerks um, to get this finalized, we'll take a five-minute recess. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Take a five minute recess. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Holliday. All those in favor? No. Oh, you know, okay. um, Carried. Mr. Chair, I believe, that, I believe that the clerk might just be in receipt of it now. You might want to check with the clerk. Yeah, they just received an email, but we'll. Um, sure. Well, sure. we're going to take, we're going to take a, we're going to take a five minute yeah. recess. Okay. So oh, that motion uh, in favor of five minute recess. That, that carries.
going to uh, bring the meeting uh, back here. Um, so, Councillor Peruta, uh, staff have finalized uh, your motion uh, for item uh, EY 24.9. I'll hand the floor over to you. Five minutes. Uh, sure. Um, maybe if, if they could put it on the screen. Uh, there you go. Okay. Um, and directs you to back to me. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's that's the motion. Thank you so much. So, so that's the motion, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Chair, what we have in front of us is, uh, I mean, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's um, there's an application that that's been made that hasn't been deemed to be complete yet, uh, but for a uh, for a, a further development with what's called uh, within what's called the Emory Village uh, 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 secondary plan area, and now. I know the, uh, and, and many of you uh, might be uh, far more familiar with this uh, than I am, because you've been uh, uh, on, uh, e on uh, Etobicoke, uh, York Community Council longer than I have. Uh, and clearly the former uh, councillor, um, uh, you know, um, had a, a vision for this area. But let me describe to you uh, the Emory Village secondary plan area. This is Weston and Finch. Uh, basically, you had uh, in in three of the quadrants industrial commercial lands that were altered by that secondary plan to allow for more sensitive uses, i.e., residential. I get that this was done in an era where uh, today, for example, if we were looking at this, we wouldn't be, I suspect, uh, you know, allowing. Uh, these sensitive uses and on some of these uh, employment lands, on some of these industrial lands. Why wouldn't we be doing that? Well, because the the site is bounded by a hydro line uh, and a rail line. The rail line uh, somewhat defines the district. It kind of wraps around it like a fence, uh, as it were. And uh, but not only that, but now we are getting these applications requesting density levels. And as you can see here, there, there are a total of uh, five new towers that are being uh, proposed, uh, uh, ranging from uh, 55 stories uh, to uh, something, uh, you know, a little lower than that, uh, uh, but not, uh, not much uh, lower, um, uh, Mr. Tech. And... So, so, so when you look at this area, so you got the rail line, you got the hydro corridor, uh, uh, you know, you, uh, you have, you know, dump trucks and you have tractor trailers that are coming out of the, the district and you have lots of garbage trucks because there's a municipal transfer station uh, that bounds is, is part of that, you know, what I call the fence around the Emory Village uh, uh, BIA area. Uh, so you have all of those heavy industrial, uh, uh, noisy, cumbersome uses. Uh, and then within that, uh, you know, densities that, that, uh, that are basically uh, through the roof in terms, of, uh, in terms of the more sensitive uses. And what we don't have, uh, um, Mr. Chair, is we don't have, you know, the, the proposal for new schools, you know, new, new community center, new parks, library, uh, pu uh, public health facility, the social services, or any of those kinds of things that make a community. So when you look at the density, the, 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 the number of towers, uh, the, the sort of the sheer volume of new residential that's being proposed for this area, and you have you know, on tour York, for example, in the early 90s, uh, they got densities through the roof. Some 13 new towers have already been approved there. Uh, that's off of a, an industrial road in the middle of an industrial area uh, on a two-lane street, off of two-lane street, essentially bounded by, by a garbage transfer station. Right. So I guess when you go live on this 55th story of this new building proposed to you, you got this beautiful view of this new garbage. The, you got beautiful view of the, the garbage transfer station, you know, out of your front window. I mean, that. I, so so, Mr. Chair, what what my motion seeks to do is is it seeks to ask our staff 
to review the applications within the context of the Emory Village uh, um, uh, secondary plan, some of those guiding principles in there, uh, as well as uh, add in uh, a couple of other uh, uh, key elements in terms of, uh, you know, schools, availability of schools in the area, uh, because there are no local schools here, um, and, uh, and some of the other services uh, that are required in order to make, uh, uh, in order to, uh, to do essentially fundamentally uh, good planning. So, uh, so I'm worried. I'm worried about uh, Weston and Finch. I'm worried about uh, the densities that are being proposed at three and four times what the secondary plan uh, contemplated and, and without any of the support services uh, that would be required in order to allow for good planning uh, to take place. Uh, so, okay. uh, uh, so my vision. Uh, uh, my Pritchard vision, just asked you to wrap in, up a in bit. In contrast to the former guy's vision, is uh, I want good planning here, uh, not just uh, you know uh, uh, a development for uh, for development's sake. Um, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Prutza. Uh, any uh, further uh, speakers to the item? Seeing none. All those in favor of the amendment, that carries an item as amended, that carries. That, uh, that brings us to the end of our uh, meeting. Um, so we have a, the bills, once they get presented on the screen. Councillor Holiday, would you like to move this? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, that the Etobicoke York Community Council pass and declare as a bylaw Bill 407 prepared for the May 17th, 2021 meeting 24 of the Community Council. All those in favor? Uh, carries. Thank you, Councillor uh, Nanziata. Councilman Jai, read that out. I don't know if you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yep, go ahead. Okay. That the Etobicoke York Community Council passed and declares a bylaw confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceedings of the Etobicoke York Community Council acting under a delegated authority of meeting 24 on May 17, 2021. All those in favor? That carries. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, thank you, staff, IT, clerks. Uh, that brings us to the uh, end of the meeting. We are adjourned. Have a good day, everyone.